Hello and welcome to Champ today's day two preview of the Cheltenham Festival. I'm joined on the line by Batterstown trainer, um, Mr. Thomas Coyle. Thomas, how are you? Hi, Barry. How are you? Not too bad. Colin Finley's in the bed tonight and he's not going to be able to join us, even though my flight was delayed. I'm coming to you live from Birmingham, Thomas, and uh, you have a few memories in Birmingham before Cheltenham yourself. I did, yeah. Not not great ones. We we, we we won't put that on the line, I tell you. We, we, we won't put that won't put that on the Colin, Colin said he'd join this evening, but he's he sent me a picture of himself in, in, in the bed and he's just not up to it this evening. But um we'll rattle on with the card on, on day two. It's a bit it's gonna be a bit easier for us, I suppose, to, to look through with the with the declarations being in. And um we'll start with the with the Ballymore novices hurdle. Um you'll probably be coming from this with with, with an Irish angle. Um, Thomas, what's, yeah, the yeah. what's the thoughts on the Ballymore? Yeah, um, good race and Irish look to have a good strong hand in it. There's three horses I'm going to talk about and okay. their form ties in pretty closely together with one horse that's not in the race, a horse of Willie Mullins is get a reason, but they've all come up against this horse. Um, so the first horse I'll talk about is the more favoured one. Um, battle over Diane. He yeah. was a point to point winner in Lockamore for the Cosgraves. Um, he fetched a lot of money at the sales. I think it was around 230,000. He's gone on since then. He's won his bumper. He's won his maiden. And the last time he won the grade one in Nace. Yeah. Bet another horse that I want to talk about, Sam's profile. Um, yeah, tell us I like him. Yeah. He was probably unlucky the last day, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean he made a mistake. He made a mistake coming to the to second last, and I think, to be honest, he, he should he like he was he was well in contention, and uh, I like you know he, he like, coming to coming down to the last Cooper, I suppose, he um he was well covered up, and maybe it took it took it took a while for him to come to to get him on the outside to to come with his challenge, and uh, jump jump the jump the last well, but I think you know I mean. Yeah, probably, probably he had he had probably lost his race from I think it was the third last where he made a mistake and he was short a room turning in as well. So yeah. I'd say probably that was his race over. But he's done what he's really stayed on to the line that day. He's a he's also a point to point winner. He he won in Craig Moore I think for Michael Goff and Shane Fitz rode him. Um, so he's going to stay as well. He's um he I think he won his maiden in Cork maybe after that. I think he fetched around eighty or a hundred thousand at the sales as well. So he's another he's another point of the point prodigy. Um but he was second that day as well. Um but them two horses. But the other horse I want to talk about is a horse of Martin Brazels. Um Martin's a very good trainer. Had the uh, had the privilege of being down with in his yard a few weeks ago and talking to him, an absolute gentleman. And um his horse is City Island. Um this horse he's run five times. And I think he's only been beaten once. He was second in a bumper in Punchestown first time out. Um, but since then, he went down, he won his bumper. I think that could have been Punchestown again. And then he's won three hurdles. Um, but tying in again with the horse, that get a, re- get a reason. He was third in that race, that battle over Diane and Sam's profile, that grade one in Nace. And City Island actually beat get a reason in his maiden hurdle so he's the horse that's tying up all his form so on that there's not a whole lot between them three horses I think um, there's probably a bit more each way value on City Island and uh, Sam's profile than the shorter priced battle over Diane yeah I, I think that they're, they're probably the two the two are bigger prices that, that I like in there against the favourite. I don't think the favourite has done anything wrong, though, Thomas, in, in England. Um, has been solid, so he has to be fair to him. He's improved probably with every run. That's champ of J. Champ, yeah. In, in, yes. in, in, in Newbury, Thomas, I'd like to point out that obviously it was a it was a slow run race in, 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 in Newbury, but he the way he he pulled so hard in that race, um, he took, I mean, Gary, Gary had a job now trying to stop him this day. Um, the form, I suppose, hasn't worked out too well. With the likes of get get a get a get away Trump disappointed in the in the Asuka, sorry in the in the Bedford hurdle. Um, Colin spoke about that the other night. The form of that race, 
it mightn't be mightn't be the strongest. Brewing up a storm is another interesting one there for Ali Murphy. Um, I think he had a big, big reputation as a pointer. I Champ is probably a little bit too short. I don't like City Island um, myself personally. And you might actually tell me about horses with a tongue strap. Always puts me off. Different horses are different. Some horses just some horses might have an issue, but just play with their tongue and ball their tongue behind the bit. Which is blocking the airwave. Um, no, I, I'd have no issue. It's to me at least you know if there is a problem or that if it's on, you rather have it on than not have it on. For me, you know. Yeah, um, you mentioned Sam's profile. I backed him at twenty fives. He's now elevens, so I can't I can't complain too much. I suppose on ratings, on ratings, when it comes to novices, though, there's always room for improvement. He's rated one, sorry, one three nine. As you said in this, in this, he. Um, I made a mistake, sorry, it was my bad at the third last. And uh, I, I, I know, I just thought Cooper maybe delayed his challenge and uh, he stayed on, he stayed on one at the end. There's probably more work to come from him and you know Mouse is going to have him. Uh, I know, avoid the, 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 the cliche, Mouse has him spot on for gentlemen, but he really does, you know. Um, I, do, I agree with you, I, I, like, I like him each way. So we'll come on to the, um, the second grade one on the card, the RSA chase, Tom. Delta work for Elliot comes in here. He's he's, he's yeah, sharpened yeah. all the time with the with the ground. I suppose softening as well. Um, yeah, he 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 has to like he he had great form. He bet Larish Berg in the Drimmore before Christmas over solid form. Yeah, solid. Like if like if Larish Berg was in the Arkle tomorrow, like I know most Irish people would probably yeah. be all over him. Um, that was actually a very good race. And then he stepped up to three mile the last day in Leopardstown and. Mm. Even he looked even better. He, I think he bet mortal was mortal second to him. So yeah, that's solid form, and he's short, but he's he's my idea of the winner. To be fair, just that that Larishberg form is very very solid. I always like my networks. The great sprinter Sacro is my network. Completely different type style type of horse here though. Uh, yeah. Um, the yeah. one I like in here, Thomas, is top of the game. He's a maiden over fences. Did you see the race at Exeter? I've seen the one um, Le Bagaroy bet the last day. Um, yeah. Was that uh, Kempton? Was, no, sorry, Kempton, yeah. It was Kempton last time out, yeah. yeah. He, 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 to be fair to him, he looked the winner turning in, but the mayor, the mayor just out battled him, so she did. Um, but Dickie Johnson was probably at his best now and Le Bagaroy, he, he kicked her down over the last three. Um mm. Yeah, he oh, he definitely he definitely has to have a chance. And the other horse, um, the other horse that was third in that race, Santini, wasn't he third? He can't have him at all. He's but, he's a ball. He's a ball. Yeah, but but the Cheltenham will suit him a lot better than that track the last time. He probably was doing all his best work at the end. Yeah, probably up the hill will suit him better. But but I can't see them beating Delta work in like to be fair. Like that, that form, the the fairy house form against Larishberg. Yeah, that's 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 good enough for me to win. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I'll I'll be taking him on. I'll certainly be taking him on. Um, with top of the game, I think I would have liked to seen top of the game in the JLT now. The way, like, I mean, there's no evidence to say he won't stay three miles. I thought he was going to win turning for home at at, at Kempton. Oh yeah, Leighton's like one five four. He's bang there. Even though he hasn't won over fences, Defi de Sol at Exeter, he beat him. But he, I mean, at the start top of the game, uncharacteristically, he gave him about 20, 20 length head start um, at Exeter. I thought that was really impressive to come back and to be only beaten by three and a half lengths. That was that was that was a taken performance, like to finish yeah. second. Okay, we move on now to the the Queen Mother Champion Chase, three thirty on day two of the Cheltenham. Can Alti or be beaten? I don't think so. No, he's bet all these horses in the race. He's beaten them easily every time. He, the one thing that I'm so surprised about Altior is how he's not the highest rated chaser in of all time. The, the what's the horse of Paul Nichols is rated higher than him? Masterminded. No, no, no. The new horse that came. Uh, of all time. Oh, sorry, surname, surname. Yeah, how he's. Rated higher officially to me is a head scratch. It's a bit, it's a bit puzzling, isn't it? Yeah, because Altior has like is he twelve in a row? Like he's done everything that's asked him. I mean, okay, he mightn't have jumped the greatest the last day, but maybe. Mm. 
but I, I can't I can't see the Irish challenge the likes of Min and that I can't see Shamin was getting bet by simply Ned around Leftist Town at times this year wasn't he yeah um, Footpad has been the major disappointment in this division I know people were saying he was going to step up and trip I actually wanted to see him going up and trip he's been a complete disappointment Min Min has, Min has got the entry here for Willie just keep an eye. Just keep an eye that the nine stay in, and if the nine stay in, might be worth taking them on. Um, yeah. Just, just, just the season that's in it. Um, yeah, but men each way. I'm going to take them on. I'm going to make a decision on it. I've never backed against Altior in my life, and I'm going to back each. I'm going to back men, men each way this year. Take, take Collins. You're obviously going with Altior. Yeah, but yeah. I wouldn't be backing him. I'll be just watching that race. <laughs> Perfect. Thomas, we'll come on to the, the champion bumper. Lots of horses been fancied in this one, and I know you like one in there. I think it's another I think it's another county mead horse. You might fill us in. Yeah. Um so it's actually it's another Gordon Elliott horse, but it's not the one you might think. It's not in by Allen. It's um yeah. it's actually hard to pronounce this. It's Aber Abacadabras, is it? Why are you taking on Envy Allen? With, okay, with the, with well the just the last day. Envoy Allen has done everything that he's asked of. Obviously, he's won, he's won his three bumpers after he was that big hefty fee after winning his point of point. But he has never been vision. He was not visually impressive in his first day. It actually, in Fairy House, you actually thought for a second he's not going to get there. But then he did win well in the end. The last day in Leopardstown, I just thought Jamie Codd was at his wit's end to get him. He... he, he he was giving him as hard a ride now as I've seen him. He was as strong as an ox on him. But just the other horse of Gordon's was very, very green. He was in behind him. He actually ended up running out through the rail. But he was he so did, yeah. green. But any time Lisa was trying to get, get him rolling and get him rolling, he was trying to duck in behind the other horse. She couldn't give him her the full ride. And it ended up that she went through the rail. But just if 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 he's learned from that... He could, he could definitely turn the tables. He, he looked a nice horse. That he won, he won his bumper in Galway, which is a good tough track as well. Um, he better horse of Mags Mullins, whose name just isn't coming to me. He just now he only won, he only won by a head or a neck, but just, just on the last day, he he looked like he might have given him a race if he if he had helped the jockey. So if he if he does be straight and has learned his lesson. He he he's a he's a better price. He's around eight or ten to one. So he'd be he'd be the one for me in it. Yeah, Kerr Kenny Gold was that was was the hard. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a ple- yeah. it wasn't a pleasant sight at uh, Leopard's no. and him, him going through the rain. Now it, it was um you could definitely see he was coming, but it was before ever he came with his challenge. Yeah, um, like in, in by Allen, he has been he's been the talking horse all season, and, and the more the ground the more the ground. Comes up soft, you'd have to think that, that the, the horse that uh, uh, Abba Cadabras will uh, <laughs> you'd probably relish that that little bit more as well, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, just moving on to the, the rest of the races on day two, Thomas. Anything in particular I should we should be looking at? Um, the Irish have a big hand in the Coral Cup, um, a horse that I was talking about that I fancied for the Supreme, um, dancing on. Dancing on my own, he's he's turned up in this. Now it is very hard to say that a horse is well handicapped off one forty in his first handicap, but he he is one of interest. It's his first handicap, and yeah, he he has you'll you'll know from tomorrow because classical dream stayed in the supreme, so you'll know how the form is running from that race. You've got classical dream and Aramon in the supreme, so he yeah. was he was four to them in in Nice. The last day, so that's one race to go. I'll just run through a couple of the other Irish. Um, um you have Yoradell, he's probably the likely favourite. Um, they say he's a handicap blot. He he went up twenty one pounds on the flat from the end of the end of last year. Um, yeah. he was a good fifth in a good handicap the last day. He's he's plenty short enough for me. I think he's around four or five to one. Um, he's short Juice, enough. For, yeah, he's, he's been short. he's been back for a while for this race, hasn't he? Thomas? Yeah, yeah. They were they were hoping he'd get in and get in, but he has got in, so he, he'll take his chance. Um, you have Farclaff for Gordon Elliott. He won the Triumph last year, but his form has been moderate this year, in my eyes. 
Um, a local, a local horse to me, um, Dermot McLaughlin's horse, Canardier. Oh. Um, I was only talking to Dermot in Nace on Sunday, and he's looking forward to running the horse. He says the better the ground is for this lad, the better chance he'll have. He's been saving him. He hasn't run him since he won over course and distance in October. He was hoping that Barry Garrity was going to get the leg up when I was talking to him, but I think Robbie Dunn is down to ride him. Think. Robbie Dunn is down to ride him, yeah. Yeah, um, but he, he won a bumper first time out in Punchestown. He, he's won over course and distance. Um, it'd be great. Dermot's, uh, Dermot's an absolute gentleman. He's, he only lives up the road from us here, and it'd be great to see a small trainer Get a get a good winner on a big day and works hard and his horses are in great form. He's he, he's having his best season up to date, so he is with his winner. absolutely yeah he's 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 going well and just one other um horse of interest in that Tully East um of Alan Fleming's I think yeah. he won a chase at the festival in two thousand seventeen. That's right. He's ten pounds lower over hurdles and Alan's horses are obviously coming into form. He had a double on Nace. Uh, he won the maiden hurdle and he won the good handicap, um, Mount Pellier, Dunham Euler. Um, he 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 won that on Sunday as well. So he had two winners on Sunday. His horses are obviously in rude health. So ten pound lower, he might have a little squeak in it as well. Um, interesting, interesting um, thoughts there on the on the Carl Cup. Yeah, it, it obviously it'd be lovely for Dermot. Vix Canvas gave him so many nice days. Yeah, uh, definitely. So he's, he's very he's, he's just over away from you, sure, Thomas. Yeah, there's, there's one horse I like on the on in, in the handicaps on on day two. It's uh, it's actually in the it's in it's in the form of um, Band of Outlaws for Red Winter. The and he's favoured for he's favoured for the he's rated he's top rated in the race. And um, you want to be in the whole your health. Picking a winner at that race because well, I'm going to give you a big price for it. Uh, big price for the for the Fred Winter. It's the second last day on day two. I've backed him at twenty fives. It's a horse called Fan 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 to soil for Tom George. Um, he's had four starts. Sorry, three starts in the in the UK. Um, winner in France. He's into about sixteen to one now from twenty fives. Obviously, he got in. Pretty, but I just, I just thought Band of Outlaws. Was a was a graded horse run in a handicap. Yeah, yeah, he could be. He could be. Um, just just one other one other thing for the whole day. The I think the only other race that we haven't covered is the cross country race. Um, yeah. Just another local man from us here, Keith Donahue, gets the leg up on Tiger Roll, who, on 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 his evidence of what he done in a Grade Two the last day in Navan with a bit of luck, should should keep Keith's role of getting another winner on the board at the festival for him. Absolutely. That, that wraps it up for, for Cheltenham Festival Day 2 preview for Champ Daddy. We'll be back for, for Day 3. And thanks very much, Thomas, for coming on. Hopefully we'll get Callum on. The, he won't be asleep tomorrow night. Yeah, no yeah. problem. Okay, so we'll talk to you tomorrow night. Good, good to hear. Bye-bye.